Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker, yes, and welcome to our show. Yes. Very important program today. Yes. I want you to stay tuned and take notes, and it's important because what we're going to be talking about today is what America is doing, and the one thing that will probably destroy your church, your home, your family, your life, as America will not be the same. America uh -huh. just will not be yeah. the same. Mm -hmm. And we're going to really delve into this issue today. It's something you need to know. Yeah. I'm serious. America is becoming an abomination unto God. Mm -hmm. They're doing things to their hate speech towards God. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we're always talking about hate speech. Well, it's the hate speech is towards God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to stand up. And Dad, I just have to share, it's been so amazing the response that we're getting from all of our new viewers who are watching us on the Voice of the Prophets Network, our PTL television network. And if you haven't already downloaded the app on your phone, the 24-hour app network where you can watch many mm -hmm. guests like Rick Renner, Larry and Tiz Huck, Perry Stone is on. I mean, the list goes on and on, but we have a 24-hour network. And I just have to say, what amazing timing. God's mm -hmm. timing is always perfect. Yes, it is. Because in a time, 2020, when we launched the network, this past year of 2020, we saw the greatest censorship on Christian television, on men and women who are speaking truth that has come against the church. And that's some of what we're going to be talking about today, Dad. But what a timely moment to have our Voice of the Prophets Network, where we don't have to be worried about being deplatformed. We can speak the truth that goes with the Word of God, and that's what it's all about. So make sure that you join us on the PTL Television Network, the Voice of the Prophets, by watching and tuning in mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. And right now, we're going to open up with a song. We're so excited. In fact, this week, we're going to tape another show at the big studio. Yes. So we're going to keep trying it out until we get it back working again. That's it, right. It, it, I, right. I had such a good time. At the volunteer luncheon, and you preached a little bit. Oh, and we got to see oh, everybody I, in person. And, and I just it want was to awesome. thank uh, Marcella and little Lori. Yeah, the whole and team. For the team. Yeah. Sue, the and whole our team. volunteer people mm -hmm. that put that together. Yeah. And uh, you ran the show. I, I think you made a show of it. Yes, we did. did we created have you seen it. We it have yet, to. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And it wasn't it amazing. It was All of our fun. partners out there. I know you guys loved it just as much as we did, but yeah. it's amazing when you see the anointing of God. Yeah. You can't ever get rid of the anointing of God when God's called you. And that's what we saw that day, Dad. When you stepped out back onto that stage, it yeah. was amazing to see how God just worked through you, spoke mm -hmm. through you, and to feel the Holy Spirit was so present yeah. at Morningside. It was exciting. Well, Tammy Sue is going to open the show today yes. with with a song mm -hmm. she sang before but she is this is one of her favorites too and it's called I've never been this homesick before before for heaven let's let's listen to Tammy Sue <laughs> Someone standing 
<laughs> before. Yes. Wow, well, that's Tammy Sue, my daughter, my firstborn child, and singing this song about heaven. And a lot Amen. of people are feeling that way. Yes. They're homesick for heaven. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you here today. Oh, and we are. we've been hearing a lot about this bill, HR5, yes. known as the Equality Act. Oh, every time yeah. I say that. Yeah. Lori, I just want to go crazy because right. it's not equality. No. no, It's the most damnable thing that could destroy church. And uh, I've been studying this bill. I've been studying it for a long time, for weeks and months. And I'm shocked that people aren't recognizing it for what it is. Yeah. It is another way that our religious freedom and even our right of conscience is being threatened. Here's Franklin Graham with Mike Huckabee talking about the equality. Today's program, we're going to talk about this bill, share some insights and present important voices in educating ourselves. And it's time for you to educate your children yeah. mm -hmm. and, and help them to grow up because they're trying to indoctrinate your kids yes. in kindergarten. That's Absolutely. what's heartbreaking. Now, you yeah. have your kids in a Christian Absolutely. school. Is that, do you feel like you're, being an isolationist, having your kids in a Christian school? You know, as a parent, I have to do everything that I can. But even at a Christian school, I keep those teachers accountable for what my teacher, what my children are being taught. Because even at Christian schools, you have to always make sure you remain involved with your children and what they're learning. You can't lose sight of that. Hmm. So we have scriptures as well as uh, to help us with our understanding is how to make a stand for God's yes, word. Amen. And you guys make it in the school. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you have to. And your kids come home, <laughs> they memorize scripture yes. because you go to a Christian school. That's right. But in America, if they if you wanted to say a prayer or wanted to have yeah. a gospel or have a scripture of any kind, it's all outlawed. Yeah, that's right. America is going to hell in a handbasket. Mm. And we must be com compassionate to a world in need of love. But we've got to understand that we've got to save America. Yes. And it, I have the entire bill right here before me. I, I, I printed it out. And uh, it is uh, about, oh, I'd say 30 pages long. And there, there's the whole bill on, that I have here before me. And then I have some material that is, that is really good. This is America. Yes. We have a right to vote on what we want. We yes. have a right to vote for the people we want Amen. to represent right. us. Absolutely. And if they don't represent us, then we can vote somebody else in. But if America goes all the way against God... Yes then America will have to face God, yes. mm -hmm. yes. not us, That's right. but we will all face God yeah. mm -hmm. individually. So the Equality Act, what is it? What, what is it all about? I have an, a, a material that one of the things I would love to give you, uh, some of this stuff, I want to give them away. Absolutely. Uh, this is from Emily yeah. Cow, Cow from the Heritage Foundation, and this is where she issued this brief. She made yeah. several, but this is a, the one that you're talking about. She's right the now. director of the Richard and Helen DeVos Center, and this is powerful because this tells you what this Equality Act really does. Mm -hmm. And I'd yes. love to put it in your hands so you and your family can have it. Yeah. But the the proposed Equality Act turns mm -hmm. sexual orientation and gender identity into protected classes under the 1964 civil rights. So everything's going back to uh, sexual orientation and gender identity. It's called SOGI. Do they, do, mm -hmm. Is there a pronunciation? SOGI? SOGI, yes. SOGI. It means sexual orientation and gender identity. And uh, protected class under the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1968 Fair Housing Act. The bill creates obvious liberty, equality, privacy, and safety concerns. H.R. 5 would empower the federal government to impose punishment 
on citizens who dissent from the Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity Act. This includes it in medical. The medical professionals, parents, women and girls, businesses and charities. The bill would violate their rights to freedom of conscious religion and speech. The bill would also take away the authority of local communities to determine who is allowed in single sex facilities and whether biological men and boys are allowed to join women and girls sports teams, which we just heard Franklin Graham talk about, Mike Huckabee talk about. The governor. And, Many places um, already have boys and girl bathrooms where they they use them together, mm-hmm. and this is part of their whole thing mm-hmm. is to erase male and female. So the proposed Equality Act (HR 5) would empower the federal government to impose civil and criminal punishment on citizens who dissent from the. Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity Mm. Act. So we're reading this to share a little bit with you about something we'd like to send out. Is that right, Maricela? Yes, that's right. Today we're offering, for those of you who have seen Janet Porter on this broadcast, we're offering her DVD, which is Light Wins. And this is what we're facing right here, how to overcome the criminalization of Christianity. This is what we're talking about by this bill that has already been passed by the House. It's now moving to Senate. So we must awake right now. This DVD, Light Wins, is going to be teaching you from people like the Bartons, David Barton, General Boykin. They're speaking on light winds will ignite a wildfire of hope and courage across America to stand up for the truth. Along with this offer, we're going to send a copy of today's broadcast where we're unveiling, revealing what is really behind the HR5 Equality Act. What is it all about? So we're going to receive this DVD teaching along with these reports, the issue brief from the Heritage Foundation, HR5 is no act of equality report along with the Liberty Council HR5 Equality Act report an extreme threat to religious freedom, speech, privacy and women's rights and we're also sending the free copy, all of these are free reports of the full, the complete HR5 Equality Act so you can be educated and know what is at, what's at hand right now. What are we fighting against? This is for a donation of $25 to the ministry. Th- this, is, this is clear material. Yes, clear. Yes. We have worked on this. We've be researched this. Yes. And this is so your teenagers could be, could do this. Absolutely. We got teenagers and beyond now our kids Absolutely. our yeah, kids are all, growing but this old. is stuff that your kids should hear yeah. yes they should yeah america is headed for destruction right. mm-hmm. and it's so important and you get the whole report free mm-hmm. because we just want you to have have the information and then i'm going to give you the liberty council report okay mm-hmm. yes and the heritage foundation. and then the heritage foundation report and here's what what she has to say also that she talks about the the, the boys joining the girls uh-huh. sports but doctors nationwide will not be allowed to treat gender what do you call it? this dysphoria dysphoria according to their own best mm-hmm. judgment and even a referral to another doctor could be a violation of HR51 Transgender advocates recommend puberty blockers for children at age 11 mm. and cross-sex hormones then in, at 16 and then reassignment of your sexual surgery at 18 is what they're, they're talking about. Under state SOGI law, what's SOGI mean again? Sexual orientation and gender identity. You're going to hear a lot about that. They've already sued hospitals in California and New Jersey for discrimination because the hospital doctors declined to remove the reproductive organs Mm. of healthy patients. And the dilemma is that the doctors 
their values goes against this proposition, goes against this bill. If there's a Christian doctor, if there's a Jewish doctor, it goes against their biblical belief or against their belief itself, their moral belief. We're watching a cultural war to protect one Listen, the numbers are amazing. You got to get this DVD because when they talk about the number they're trying to protect compared to, listen, there's 7 billion, over 7 billion people on this earth. And the percentage that this bill is trying to protect versus the rest of the world, it's an imbalance. There's no equality when it comes to that. So you're right. The doctors are trying to fight against this. But when you read later on on what you're uh, reading this also affects parents. Parents will begin to lose rights on their own children when children are given the right to be vocal and have the right to say anything. Now, you as a parent, you have no But they're authority. asking little boys and little girls to say, do you want to be a boy? Do you want to be a girl? They're feeding it into their minds. What little boy and little girl has the ability to reason out whether they want to become a girl? And, and if they hang out with a bunch of little girls playing with their dolls, they say, well, yeah, I'll be a girl. You know, you know just kids can do crazy things. Mm -hmm. And yet parents will be taken out of the issue. And already the government has intervened with situations. And that's why there's a lot of this material. But according to the American psychiatric association up to 98 percent of the mm. boys and up to 88 percent of the girls who experience gender dysphoria will naturally resolve their dysphoria as they mature mm. that's the kind of information you need to know this is a big lie why they want to take over america in this way and, and cause such pain and dysfunction. They want to create a new breed of society in America. And that, uh, you know, one of the things I read recently, and uh, l let, me ju let me just read to you from, this is the full text. I'm not reading the full text, don't get scared. <laughs> I just want to read to you on page two of the actual bill th it's actually three this is the bill and here it is a single incident of discrimination may have more than one basis for example discrimination against a married same sex couple could be based on the sex stereotype that marriage should only be between heterosexual couples the sexual orientation of the two individuals in the couple or both. But they're just saying you can be sued mm -hmm. just by being a normal couple who preaches mm -hmm. that a man and a woman is married. Yeah. Well, we pre because that's what the Word of God says. And but I can't imagine I'm sitting on television. Yeah. I know I'm at the end of the age, <laughs> you know, when I see this. Right. Don't you? Yes. And, and the psychiatrists even mm -hmm. say in the end, they're all going to come out okay. They just go through. They're just like, eh. boy, uh, if you've ever had a, uh, you haven't raised any um, kids going through puberty, have you? <laughs> not no, yet. they're, but they're I, little right now, but she's but we not raised, yet. But I've been <laughs> one of those children. Lori, <laughs> she's been Lori, one. Lori and I have. Oh, yeah. And I'll yeah. tell you what. It's something. <laughs> puberty we is strong know. times. Yes. Boy, and, those, are, and those so, are trying times for and, sure. And you understand, God meant for male and female. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you explain this to your yeah. children, mm -hmm. that it, this is what God, the, the sex drive wasn't made to make Hollywood movies. That's right. It was made to make a family. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you have babies, the miracle of babies. Don't you think it's amazing? Oh, it's a miracle. Yeah. I remember when I was a little boy, I used to say, how come people have babies after they're married? You know, <laughs> I didn't know all the facts of life oh, back man. then, but you know what I mean? And it's a miracle it of is. God. It is. That causes the male and the female to come. Mm -hmm. And this is what God, but man says, no, we don't want to do this anymore. And we have got to 
stand up. Amen. And, and I wish you'd order this product today we're offering mm -hmm. just because it's... To educate yourself. We need to be educated. You're getting two DVDs. Mm -hmm. The DVD of our teaching today. Yes. And then you get the DVD uh, from... Janet Porter, Light Wins. And you also get all, then as a bonus with that, and when you get the two videos, you get all of, these of reports. the reports. Yes. You get a the full report from the government mm -hmm. of what is the Equality yep. Act. You That's get right. that. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, uh, the Issue Brief by the Heritage Foundation, one of them, and a Liberty Council report. This report, I'll tell you, by... Emily Cow mm -hmm. is so powerful. Yeah, She's really the director is. of the Richard and Helen DeVos Center. It simplifies it. And it, it she makes it clear. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the report that I'm I'm reading and I and I, I'm 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 putting it in my uh <laughs> my files to keep yeah. it. So I want you to have it yeah. Yeah. for yes. yours. But I want you to order this. I want you to begin to teach. You and, that have Sunday yeah. school classes, teach. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. Amen. 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 According to the Heritage Foundation, the proposed Equality Act of 2021 would make mainstream beliefs about marriage, biological facts, about sex differences, and many sincerely held beliefs punishable under the law <laughs> in the world Genesis 1:27 says tell us so God created man in his own image in the image of God yeah he created him male and female he he created them oh People, this yeah. bill violates America's constitutional freedoms and uses civil right law to punish those who do not hold the correct beliefs. This is scary. Mm -hmm. Recently, we had David and Tim Barton, the great historians. You ought to honor people like David yes. and Tim Barton because they're the historians yes. of not just Christianity, but the history of America. Amen. They were on our program just a few days ago, and they gave us a clear understanding about this bill. Please watch them right now. Yeah, uh, e equality is great because God gives equality, but not this bill. Mm -hmm. Because what it does is says, we don't like the fact that biblical people with their conscience say, hey, marriage is a man and a woman, and there's two genders, and that's what we believe. This says if you believe that, you need to lose any kind of standing you have mm -hmm. in civil areas. And so what, what it does, it says if, if you have a belief, a religious belief, a conscience belief uh, about gender, about sexuality, about marriage, about whatever, you have to give that up. This federal law, if it passes, will take gender and place it at the same level as race and religion in civil rights laws. And so what happens is gender then becomes a civil right that trumps your religious liberties. So with H.R. 5, it becomes an open blanket to persecute. Now, it's called the Equality Act, but it's not because it gives supremacy to those who are opposed to traditional religious beliefs. And it gives them the ability to come after you with federal law, with federal forces, and, and say, hey, you have to give up your belief. You have to, you know, in the case of, of, of going to court or whatever it is— for this belief. So it's called the Equality Act. It is not the Equality Act. Yeah, and it's worth noting in the midst of this, there there are several direct threats that are in this That's coming right. against if you're an adoption agency. And let's say that there's actually many Catholic adoption agencies, and, and the Catholic position has long been what the Bible teaches when it comes to gender and human sexuality, that there's a male and a female. And, and these Catholic adoption agencies that have, again, been around for some of them hundreds of years that are looking for a home where there is a mother and a father that they can place this child in. Well, this Equality Act says if you are not willing to place a child with a lesbian couple or a homosexual couple, then you will lose your license. You will lose your ability to even be able to run this orphanage or right, whatever this system is that you run. The same thing with Christian businesses. There have been laws that have passed in America before that maybe were things— uh, aggressive in in interpretation 
uh, especially when it comes to to Christianity, but there were what, what was known as a religious exemption. So when it when it come to a hiring act, that if you were a a company, an organization who did business with a city, who did business with the federal government, if you did not hire LGBTQ plus people, then you were shown or you'd be accused of being discriminatory in your hiring practice, and you would lose contracts, et cetera. There were given religious exemptions for churches that if churches believe that marriage is a man and woman, or if there's a Christian school and they believe marriage is a man and woman, then they wouldn't have to hire people from the LGBT community because there was a religious exemption. In HR 5, there is no religious exemption, which means that if somebody from the LGBTQ plus community shows up to your church, to your Christian school, and they apply for a job, and, and you do not hire them on the grounds that their worldview, their philosophy does not line up with biblical truth, with what your organization believes— your church, your school can be shut down because of your discriminatory hiring practices because you're not viewing equality. And again, this is not equality in the sense of everybody is treated as a human. This is equality in the sense of if you do not hire someone from LGBTQ+, then you don't have the right to operate as a business anymore. And that very devastating. There's a lot more consequences and side effects, but that's part of HR 5. Wow. Wow, wow, they explain wow. it so Excellent. well, Tim and David Barton. Thank God for people who yes. are smart <laughs> well, and know the word of God it. and know history and know science. It's so important. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 2 through 4, the Bible tells us that in the last days, mm -hmm. this is so powerful, listen to me, men will be lovers of themselves Lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers. Are you listening to me? Listening, yeah. Disobedient to parents. Mm -hmm. Wow. Unthankful, unholy. Hold on. Without natural affections. What is this? To take a little boy and to try to turn him into a little girl and take a little girl and turn and to, and, to, and, to, and to just go crazy that we are God somehow. Mm, that's scary. We want to recreate man mm. in our own images. Yeah. Wow. And this bill is out there to do this. And I know I'm making people mad, but I'm standing up. For America. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, let me go on. G go back a little bit in this scripture because it says, without natural affections, it's not natural. That's right. To cut off the sex organs of little boys and little girls, to change their sexual orientation. The Bible says there will be truce breakers. Slanders, I'm going on. Unrestrained. This is being unrestrained. Mm -hmm. sure. Fierce. Despisers of those that who are good. Mm -hmm. Betraitors. Reckless. Conceited. Man, the Bible was so clear here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yeah. Wow. This Equality Act seems to fit right in with that verse. Absolutely wow. does. Absolutely. It sure does. It's strong. I think so many times we, we, we've preached this verse, us preachers have, you know, as ministers. Um, we, we've read it, you know, as lay people, and we really, you know, we, you want to believe the whole Word of God. Of course, the whole Word of God is the Word of God, mm -hmm. and it's right there. But it's pretty, it's, it's really eye-opening yes. to think that we're li actually yes. living we it are. right it's this very minute right where we like are. we've we're, never done lived before like yes. no one's ever lived before. This is, they're, they're voting on this. Yeah. They're already this is a real thing, acting people. upon this yes. thing. Yes. That's this right. This is dangerous. Right. Yeah. Listen, you said it earlier. We must be compassionate and love but it's difficult for people when their own family members are going through this. It's very difficult when your own church people are going through this. But you have to understand what this bill is about. Because if we don't understand and educate what we're talking about, 
you you're going to be misguided. Look at the stern warning that Franklin Graham yeah. gave earlier. The churches, the religious organizations don't mm-hmm. even understand what this bill is all about. If you listen, you have to get this because according to the Liberty Council, this is what they write. Shockingly, H.R. 5 expresses the state the right to religious free exercise under federal law that may not be used as a claim or a defense. That statement alone tells you we as a church are going to lose our right through this bill. That's yeah. right. So how will this bill affect Christian and Christian businesses and, and just business in general? How will this affect everybody? According to the Liberty Council, mm-hmm. who's studied all of this, it will be used as a wrecking ball to churches, religious organizations, religious freedom, and free speech. Wow. We will become second class mm. citizens. Look what they say here. I don't mean to jump in, but yes, it goes you are. right in. <laughs> HR5, listen to the wording they use. HR5 guts. Religious free exercise protection, it guts it out. You have to understand, if you preach the gospel, if you represent the gospel in any way, evangelists will no longer be in the corner to be able to preach. It prohibits free exercise of religion as a claim or a defense. Wow. We have a video clip here from the documentary Light Winds, which was produced by our dear friend Janet Porter, who we're sending out today, I believe. You've yes, got right that are, ready yes. to go. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get a whole package on this subject today. Please get this for your church. Please get this for your grandchildren and your children. Please get it for your family. So let's hear what these leaders have to say, and then we can talk about this when we come back. At the very dawn of mankind, you can read about it in Genesis 2.14, where the scripture says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. That's the divine plan. It was then and it is now. We have used the Bible as a as a, a source book, like the encyclopedia or the dictionary, to be used as a supplement to what we really believe to be true, which is secular humanism. And the church is filled with people that, are, that are, have a form of godliness but deny its power. We were just traveling on business in Florida at a large private equities group with tons of employees. Human resources manager was a homosexual, came up to us and said, guys, I've been watching and I just appreciate the way that you guys went about this. And I put my arm on him and said, can I open the scripture to you? I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, 10, and 11, and it talks about the adulterer, the, the thief, the immoral, the homosexual. None of those will inherit the kingdom of God. And then I went to the verse that said, but such were some of you. You were washed, you were cleansed, you were sanctified. And I said, buddy, that was me. And I said, and this is you. This, you have the opportunity to be washed and free of your sin. And with tears in his eyes, he knelt his head and he prayed to receive Christ. That's what happened. That's the power of the gospel. To silence any aspect of gospel truth or moral truth is ultimately to silence the gospel. So if you think that those who are trying to keep you quiet about one particular issue, you've underestimated your opposition. They want to silence the whole gospel. And if that's what it takes to accomplish their goal, that's exactly what they will do. Wow. Wow. You know, Dad, Dutch Sheets recently issued an urgent call to action to stop this bill, H.R. 5. He said it will force faith-based organizations to hire employees who do not share their beliefs. And according to the Heritage Foundation, the Equality Act guts, and I said it earlier, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, and it threatens constitutional freedoms by taking away protections of religious conscience from the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And I want to show you a clip from Pastor Garland Hunt from the Georgia. And this is what he had to say. And I think it's very important because this is an African-American pastor that deals with this issue. Watch this. I've been talking to you about this Equality Act. I'm going to stay right on it. Because I I told you that before you know it, they'll tell you who you can hire and fire in your church, in in your schools, in your daycare, 
uh, who, who who takes care of your kids, all these things, or who maybe what, what what people you have in a business and all these things because he doesn't you have any rights. No Christian has no rights. The only person that has a right is somebody who who decides that he doesn't want to be a, a, a boy anymore. He wants to be a girl. I mean that we have we have laws in Georgia that we're dealing with right now where we're trying to give the um, the, the rights to a child that he's not um, able to change his gender. Uh, why he's 13 or 14 years old. I mean, what, what we heard about Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union let that child, that he, in his, in his pre-teens, change his gender? What are we saying in our nation? Uh, God's not happy with this. God's not going to allow for this. He's not going to allow us to redefine marriage. He's not going to allow us to, to determine what, what, what men and men and women and women. He's certainly not going to allow us to change our gender. You're saying that God made a mistake? God did not make a mistake. So, so we have to take our place as a watchman. We have to take our place as a watchman. Wow, that's powerful. And I want to encourage you, Dad, everyone, we must get educated. I love what you're doing, Dad. You're sending out these resources today. Take advantage of it. Call us right now to get your order in. You're going to receive the Light Wins DVD by Janet Porter. This is how to overcome the criminalization of Christianity, along with today's broadcast, where we're, we're teaching what really lies behind the HR5 Equality Act bill. In this, you're also going to receive the complete the entire complete bill of the hr5 equality act along with two reports the issue brief hr5 is no act of equality and the liberty council hr5 equality act an extreme threat to religious freedom speech privacy and women's right report we are going to send you the tangible things that you can go and start sharing with your pastors the ministers in your life your family members these are going to be the tangible the prints the printouts of these reports that you can have read them start studying and seeing what is really happening but and you get two videos that's right yes the on top of that Absolutely. In the battle between darkness and, and light, light wins how to overcome the criminalization of Christianity. So that's a full DVD right there, along with today's teaching. As we've gone through, we've brought to you different perspectives of what's happening, uncovering what the HR5 Equality Act is and what's really behind it. That's and you know, Dad, when Janet Porter, she was just on the broadcast with us a few weeks ago, she told us a step we could take to make a stand. So I want all of you, this is critical, let's watch as we have Janet Porter are telling us what you and I can do to be a part of this. It's, it's actually all spelled out on the postcard. Number one, it destroys our religious liberties. Romans 1, if you want to read 1 Corinthians or Leviticus or anything the Bible has to say about this, guess what? The government's going to come in and say, no, that's discrimination. You're all just as if you were racist. We're going to come in and we're going to shut you down. So it reaches into the church, but then it also eradicates free speech. It reaches not only onto your own website, not only into adoption agencies who don't want to place children with men who, who dress as women. Um, it's also something that reaches into your own homes. What happens if you have a neighborhood Bible study and you communicate God's word on this subject? Um, somebody can say, I'm going to report you because this is illegal what you're doing. It repeals every pro-life law. A lot of people don't know that. And that's what really got my attention. I mean, I've been working, as you know, the last decade, working to pass heartbeat laws. But what good is it if H.R. 5 becomes law, that federal law will trump all the states that have been passing these things. And so what we've got to do is stand up now and to be to, to be a resolute, strong message that they cannot miss. And that's why I went with a warning color of orange, that this is something they can't miss. OK, the third point is the, it'll repeal the pro-life laws. Then it will endanger women. Imagine if you're a woman who's been abused by her husband who finds herself, she goes to a shelter, all right? Guess what? This shelter is not going to be able to refuse any man as long as they say, I'm a woman, I identify as a woman with a simple costume change. Any man can invade a shelter, can invade your shower room, your locker room, your bathroom, can come into any previously safe space. It is what some are calling political rape of women because it's putting them in such harm's way. If you are a serial rapist and you'd like to go to the woman's prison instead of the man's prison, again, say you're a woman, 
And there you are. And all of these women uh, who are incarcerated are also put in harm's way. Shelters also in harm's way. And then the other point is it harms children. Not only it destroys their innocence, it indoctrinates them with propaganda contrary to the word of God, contrary to their best interests, so that these children are ending up confused. According to the American College of Pediatrics, if you have a child who's got a mental disorder called gender dysphoria, they're confused about their gender, guess what? The American College of of Pediatrics says 80 to 95 percent, if you don't intervene, if you don't do hormone therapy, surgery, or any kind of of propaganda affirmation, 80 to 95% of these kids are going to be just fine. They're going to realize, yeah, I am as God made me. I am a woman. I have an XX. If you are a male, you have an XY. That does it. That's, 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 that's the truth. And so if we don't uh, pour these, these, this propaganda into the schools, um, and again, keep in mind, if you're a seven-year-old child and you've been told that, you know, Johnny's a little girl, then, then guess what? You as a parent cannot tell Johnny that he's not allowed to get the, the therapy that would, that would potentially render him sterile or to get a, a, a amputation of healthy body parts to, to mutilate his body in surgery. You as a parent will not be able to protect your child. You as a pastor will not be able to counsel children from a biblical viewpoint and, and, and help those 80 to 95 percent who will automatically come back into to, uh, to understanding of uh, and, and resolution of their gender. Um, but if you intervene with this kind of propaganda, with this kind of, of, of really child abuse, um, then, then this is this is what this is. This is child abuse. It's a repeal of every pro-life law we have, and it's a destruction of our religious liberties. It is eradication of the freedom of speech. It is the most dangerous bill that's ever been introduced. And the good news is, we are joining together to send a strong message. Now, the message is 771,000. Again, we just started this campaign, and uh, I know that when people go to stophr5.com. You click a button and you're doing something, you're not just signing a petition, you're not just, just making a call. Those are all good things to do. But you know what? We're going to send them more mail than they have ever seen, more orange postcards than have ever been delivered in the United States Senate. And they're going to be they're going to take notice of this, whether they're with us or whether they're not with us, or if maybe they're on the fence and they're they're thinking about one of these compromise versions, we say no. And that's the message being delivered, Pastor. We say no. Yeah, yeah. Man. that's right. Amen, Janet. We agree Thank with you. you, Janet. Yeah. And we want, this is the most important package I probably have ever sent out. I want you yes. to get it. We put the material together. Yes. We want to send it out. Mm-hmm. All the, all the gathered material the re- is, we've gathered the is resources free except for the you. two yes. videos mm-hmm. and you're helping support the ministry that's with right. the videos. Mm-hmm. You get those two uh, you videos. You get the Light Winds DVD and you get a uh, um, today's broadcast Mm -hmm. and then all of this amazing information that we've we put together for you to help you understand what we are living through right now i want to know this though you know how do we pray and work through this process what does the bible tell us well the bible tells us in mark 12 verse 30 31 you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind, with all your strength, this is the first commandment. Mm -hmm. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. That's right. The Bible tells us to love one another. We are not supposed to hate each other or to treat each other differently because we don't agree, but we are supposed to stand for biblical truth and for our values. Here's Governor Mike Huckabee, one of my dear friends, to share with us about that. Phil Robertson from the uh, famous and successful show Duck Dynasty made some comments that, well, they might have been a little on the edge in terms of the manner in which he said them, but they were consistent again with Christian beliefs of people all over America and the world. A&E, the network that had made a lot of money off the Robertson family, initially decided to yank them off the air, but the outcry was such they finally had to reverse that decision. In both of these cases, it was a matter of people who were politically correct somehow wanting to tell Christians to just shut up and go away. Jesus told his disciples that they weren't supposed to shut up and go away, and he told them right here at Caesarea Philippi 
So I couldn't think of any better place to say it than here. It's an important lesson. Sometimes Christians lose because they don't even show up to fight the battle. I don't saying we ought to be mean about it, but we've got to be clear about it. And I hope we will be. Listen, in John 8, 32, it says this, you shall know the truth and the truth Amen. shall set you free. Yeah. And that means when we say that, that means we stand firm, but we show kindness and compassion and, and patience to those. And we pray, you know, we need, you know, my son just leaned over to me and she just said to me, mom, we need to be fasting and praying. Yes. You know, Jesus Amen. said that the hard things come. He said to the, his disciples, by what? by prayer and fasting. And so when we do our laser prayer, which Jim has taught about us yeah. throughout the years about laser praying on a, a subject or a matter going on in one's life, we laser pray together. We fast, we pray, and, and we love and with kindness, compassion, and patience. I'm glad you said that because you never know. Dad and I were just talking. You guys talk over there. We talk over here. You <laughs> never know what the transgender community are going through psychologically. They abuse the, 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 listen, these are someone's kids. These are someone's parents. And, and what you just said, showing love and compassion without compromising biblical truth is the key. We have to love this, but there are ministries out there that are dedicated to helping the LGBTQ community. There are biblical truths to be able to walk through this process. But the first thing, like you said, is knowing the truth. We have to fast and pray as a church. If we want to see revival, we want to see an awakening take place, we must come together in agreement and understand that at the end of the day, Jesus said to love God and then to love your neighbor as yourself. That is two of the greatest commandments of all, is to love. We are facing a cultural war between the church and this bill that is taking place. We are going to continue to give you updates as we go along. Continue to pray for this ministry. Continue to support this ministry. We have to stand together, Amen. just like all the leaders have said throughout the program. Yeah. Order the the whole package today, the two videos yes. and all the materials that we're sending out. Yes. This is the facts. That's right. Pastors and leaders should notify other pastors and faith-based groups of the threat and invite them to urge their senators to vote no on this bill. Educate your congregation from the pulpit on the threats posed by HR5 and encourage them to contact their U.S. senators with letters, emails, and calls urging them to vote no on this bill. Here is a clip from light winds to encourage us and remind us how urgent this issue is. Fire is raging all around. If you think you're safe in the church, think again. Christianity says we're all sinners, we need to repent, and to do all this we need a savior, Jesus Christ. The term sexual orientation means just the opposite. You're born a certain way, you have no hope of change, and therefore you can act out any way you want. It's a direct challenge to the gospel, and most Christians didn't see it coming. There is a clash. Uh, and so this is not only a legal battle, it is not only a political battle, it is a spiritual battle. What's coming next is going to be an assault on the church like we, we've never seen before. There's going to be a dividing of sheep and goats. Or they can ultimately say to a minister that has a tax deduction, oh, that's not really your money. You're getting a tax deduction, and we're going to make you do this. I'm afraid, as a Christian broadcaster, what happened in Canada could happen here, and that is where they censor their programs. Even their Bible teaching programs are not allowed to preach on, like Romans chapter 1, for example. Uh, you're, you're not, uh, so they, they're controlling what the churches say, at least what the Christian broadcasters say. We are seeing. Uh, the, the attempt to silence Christianity, to rip pages out of the Bible, uh, and, and to say, you who are professing and teaching this, you by definition are hateful, by definition you are destructive. And this has been attempted before, this has happened before, where Christians have been called the enemies of society. 
Let's stand together Absolutely. in this time. We must. It's serious, serious time. Yes, it yes. is. And if the church is going to stand, it, it is going to have to do it now. That's because right. Because it's going to be too late soon. Mm. Right. And so call right now, 1-888-988-1588. That's toll free. Yes. And we order this product today, The Criminalization of Christianity. This offer gives two DVDs. Right. And you, so you have two videos, mm -hmm. and then you have all the materials free of the Liberty Council mm -hmm. and the HR5 Bill. The bill. From the Heritage Foundation, they issue briefs. So you receive all three of those different reports. And it will bring you up to date. You're going to know the exact bill, every word for word, and it will shock you. But then you're going to have people interpreting it for you, which you really don't know, don't have to, because you can read the bill for yourself. Right. But the help teach you and to teach your classes and to teach your friends and neighbors you should have your neighbors all come in because we won't have a church left if we don't take a stand against this which is total opposite of equality it says equality act it is it is unequality is what it is the destruction of the church act as far as i'm concerned wow give today Give, and it shall be given unto you, the Bible says. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you.